to start off, first of all, I just wanted to say really thank you all for uh, for playing this. I'm very excited about um, running this for you guys. This is something I've been working on for about the past six months or so, five, six months. Oh. Um, and uh, you know, slowly evolving it, uh, writing mostly in the mornings and then you know, taking a break now and again, but it's been in progress for, for quite some time. This is what I think will be, I hope will be chapter one of a larger adventure if people want to continue. Um, but it should keep people entertained for at least a few levels. Um, that said, it's totally up to you guys. Uh, it's really intended to give the players a lot of agency and control over the plot and the story and what happens. Um, so there's going to be things that are going on. You'll discover what those are, I hope, and um, you can decide what to do. There's no, though, like single specific goal that you must do or that you should do. Um, there are, there are, you know, just like anything else, there'll be, there'll be choices put in front of you or things that um, hopefully will be, you know, enough to give you some guidance and not let you feel too lost, but still let you feel like you've got some choices. So I guess the bottom line is don't feel like, you know, there's something in this story that you absolutely have to do. Otherwise, you're going to miss something. It's really up to you guys, you know, how you, how you do it and how you proceed. And I'll, I'll do my best to do it, you know, change and, and adapt as we go along. Um, let's see, in terms of um, some mechanical things, please track your own hit points and spell slots and resources. I'll try to track also, um, but I might lose track of your guys' stuff. So um, just keep, keep track yourself, please. Hmm. Um, on the voyage and probably in town, uh, the characters that you'll be meeting, um, a lot of them are sailors and may have sailor talk. Um, I'll try to keep the language down, but um, forgive me in advance if, they, if, you, if you hear some sailor talk. Um, so I hope, I hope you can forgive that. Um, last bit of note is that uh, this is a play test. It's the first time that I've run this adventure. So if I kill you all, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry about it. Well, thanks for DMing, <laughs> and I'm uh, yeah, excited to see how this goes. Yeah, me too. Cool. Uh, now, uh, anyway, Richard, if you kill me, you know what will happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, back, yeah? That's right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, okay, before we jump in, does anybody have any out-of-character meta-mechanical questions? Uh, yes, Richard, sorry, I I'm not very good at um, spells. I have uh, three spells. Um, I can use them uh, any time, or there is a, a limited number of spells that I can use um, during a day. Yep. So you have uh, three spell slots as a third level ranger, three level mm. one slots. Mm. Um, you can you can choose between all the spells. I guess you know three spells too, so it's that that sort of makes it easy. But you can you can use those in any order you want. You can cast one of them three times or you know each one of them one time okay um, good it's okay. each each long rest um okay. then if you take a long rest they they reset okay thank you well yep. if you remember car kind of same yeah yeah remember him a, a mark of a hunter yep yep <laughs> um, oh and so to cast them it's it's an action to to cast your spells i think call it. a disclaimer for myself i've been kind of under the weather today so if I sound loony or I don't know, you know, sloppy, uh, that's on me. I'm sorry, but I'll try to keep focus. Yeah, hope you feel better soon. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, shall we jump in? I don't know. Uh -huh. Sure. Yeah. What's that? Okay. So, the four of you are on board. The ship, the Doncast. It's a large square rigger ship. You've been on board for about two weeks. Um, you joined the ship um, in response to recruitment in one form or another. Um, it may have been a flyer that you saw on the road. It may have been an agent who actively tried to recruit you and gave you some reason for why it would be a good idea for you to go on this adventure. Um, you may have had your own reasons. You, they may have been voluntary. They may have been less than voluntary. But here you are. 
Um, you've been on board now for, for two solid weeks. First starting out um, from Cali Mestos, the, the weather was um, a bit breezy and you had some strong seas as you first set out. Um, the ship was was rocking and, and crashing through through the seas for the first four or five days. And it was less than comfortable for most of you. Um, interestingly, Molly didn't seem to have any bad reaction to it. The rest of you struggled a bit. Um, in particular, Fervis looked a little bit disgruntled by the whole thing. Um, but after a few days, um, the seas settled down, the wind calmed down. It's a nice, gentle, but firm breeze um, from the east. So you've got a nice, um, steady downhill wind uh, sailing directly west. Um, that's been that way for, for about two and a half weeks now. Um, you're sailing, as a matter of fact, I'll show you this. You're sailing now um, with a crew of 15. Um, they're all humans. Um, they look like they've been sailing for quite some time with the captain. Captain's name is Captain Glover. Um, captain Glover is a handsome but worn looking man. He wears a long coat that is uh, used and looks like it's, it's seen many a day at sea. Um, he stands very steadily on, on, the, on the deck, uh, legs spread. Uh, he looks like he could easily uh, move into action quickly if he needs to, but his, his manner is very, very calm. Um, he speaks to his men and his men answer his commands uh, very quickly and without complaint. He does not shout, but he speaks with great authority in a quiet voice, but a voice that carries very, very well, even in the wind. Um, it's now two weeks at sea. The sun is starting to make its way down, uh, setting towards the west, um, sort of late afternoon. And for the first time, the captain uh, turns to you all and invites you to join him on the, um, in the, uh, the, the, the wheel chamber the cockpit on the uh, aft deck. And he says to you all, well, lads, sun's below the yard arm, time for a grog. And he signals to one of his crew, smiles and runs below deck, shortly returning with mugs filled with a sweet dark liquor, slightly diluted with water. He turns to you again and says, so all weather and ways remaining fair, we should reach Gawatch in another week. Do all of you know your tasks and are you ready to perform? And he turns and looks at you all. And so, yes, I'm all for in. Let's do this. Excellent. So your, your main task, as, as you know, um, is to assist uh, Francis Ofrick. Um, who has gone ahead and should be at Galwatch waiting for you. Um, he will have to tell you exactly what your mission is. My mission is to get you there safely. Uh, so far, the weather has been very fair, and hopefully we will have some success in, in doing that and keeping with this, with this fair weather. Um, do any of you have any questions, or have you, have you become familiar with each other? And if not, please, uh, you know, tell your stories. I'm curious to hear. Hmm. He turns to uh, the, uh, the elf named Elbin and says, what about you, lad? You look like a young, eager sort. What's your oh, story? I was untrusted by my clan to to actually discover the big world. And this is a great opportunity. And uh, we will go there and I'm sure we'll have uh, great adventures and um, we'll uh, cover ourselves with glory for the, the sake of our tribe, my clan, my family. I'm, I'm so happy to, to be sailing towards uh, this new horizon. 
<laughs> wow. Very enthusiastic. That's good to hear. Keep that up. Yes. And he turns to uh, the halfling, the darker of the group, and says, you, your name is Eleanor, is it not? What is your story? Well, apparently, I heard about this land like some years ago. And like I heard about the mysterious stuff that they brought back from there, like powerful magic items and stuff that I, nobody has ever seen before. And they didn't know how they crafted these things. So as a researcher, I was really interested. I got my hands on some of these artifacts and items and actually studied them. But no matter how much I tried, I still couldn't quite craft them from scratch because the materials were a bit unknown and not found on our land. So basically, I'm trying to uncover the mystery behind the artifacts that we received over the past hundred years. And I would like to learn how can I make these artifacts as well as if I can find something of value and bring it back, I will be more than happy. And that's my reason, my objective in this mission, basically. And of course, I'm also going to assist with uh, uh, Mr. Orifers in, uh, in his uh, negotiations to bring back the trade between um, both uh, countries, I guess. That's also my second objective here. Admirable, to be sure. Quite a number of objectives. I wish you good luck. Oh, thanks a lot. I, I tend to forget names quite easily, but please don't mind me if I forget somebody's name. This is just a bad habit of mine. <laughs> no worries. I'm sure you'll get to know everyone quite well by the time your journey is done. He turns and says, and you, Miss Molly with the red hair, you um, also seem like one that would not normally expect to see on, a, on an adventure like this, but yet there's determination in your face. I can see that plainly. What is your story? Molly presents itself as wearing a long cape with a hooded, with a hood. And while you can see a red hair, a red messy hair coming out of it, she doesn't seem as excited as the other two. With a very cold stare, he watches the captain, she watches the captain and says, I'm here because I need to be here, not because I wanted to. I will do my best. Nothing much to say about my story. That's all anybody can ask. That's all anybody can do. Understood. And best of luck to you. And he turns to the older man with the impressive beard and white hair. And you, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. uh, you. The old man looks puzzled and says, well, first of all, I can't remember the last time someone called me lad. Must have been like around the last war. But I, I think um, there must be some misunderstanding here, really. Uh, I, I, well, they told me that like there's going to be a championship, a chess, a dragon chess championship in, in uh, Calet Masters, and uh, it's being cancelled and uh, taken overseas. So. Uh, they put a bunch of papers in front of me, and well, I didn't have my my glasses on me, so I just signed everything they said. Like, you know, I I really wanna go and uh, beat the crap out of this new world chess masters, if any. And uh, th this is all new uh, new news to me. Uh, Ulfric who? Chess masters, new world chess uh, dragon chess, you say? Yeah. I don't know what to say about that. I am, it's been a while since I've been to Grelandar and, and Port Gawash specifically. Um, it's a fine place, beautiful, beautiful country. Um, the people are, are kind and peaceful and, and you know, wonderful to, to, to be around. I've never heard of any of them playing dragon chest, I, I must say, although I, I could be proven wrong. Um, I will say that the reason for, for this voyage is only one reason, and that is to take your group to Port Galwatch to support Francis Ulfric uh, for the Kelly Merchant Guild and their efforts to reopen trade 
uh, between Gralidar and the Kingdom of Calais, uh, which for quite some time uh, was progressing favorably. And recently, uh, there have been developments that have disturbed the kingdom and the guild. Um, and for a number of reasons, it now appears that it comes down to you group uh, to support one of the guild's finest negotiators to, to try to reopen the, the routes between uh, Gralandar, specifically through Port Gotwatch and, and Cali Mastros. All right, uh, Captain um, Glover, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like the ship's gonna stop. So, I mean, uh, let's just go there and you know, see what see what it brings to us. I mean, uh, I've already beaten most of your sailors and I'm getting kind of bored. <laughs> would you be up for a match later? Certainly, I would be, I would be delighted. All right, um, don't deal then. That sounds fine. Very good. Um, well, I guess what I should do is allow the group of you to enjoy the rest of this evening. The sun is setting nicely and we have a few more days at sea. In the meantime, you can uh, enjoy yourselves, relax, and uh, we will see what the rest of the days bring us. And with that, he um, turns the wheel over to his uh, second mate, and uh, he heads below deck. This time it is already late afternoon, uh, early evening. The sun has set almost, well, has dropped almost entirely down the sky. It's now resting a giant burning red globe right on top of the horizon, um, directly in front of the bow. And Good. Let's see. Could Eleanor give me a perception check, please? Okay. Nine. Oh, that's enough. You look over and you notice Molly and Molly is staring directly at the sun, which is still quite bright. You're not able to look at the sun directly. And you notice that she's not even blinking. She's just staring deeply into the sun um, as it starts to descend. Molly, you don't realize that you're looking into the sun um, as it's setting. Um, you, your mind is drifting. But as the warmth of the sun shines on your face for a moment, it's almost as if there's something within the sun, perhaps on the bow of the ship looking out into the sun across the sea. You can't quite tell what it is. And then you see that it turns to you and it's something, you cannot describe it, but you could swear that it's smiling with a joyous, perhaps somewhat mischievous, you think, grin back at you. And then the image fades and you realize that you're looking into the sun and you blink repeatedly. Oh, that's so nice. Well, she keeps this sensation for herself and she tries to stay isolated and look at the sun and uh, see as much as she can. You don't see anything else at this moment, but you wonder what that might have been if it was a dream, if it was simply the sea and the salt air playing tricks with your mind, you're not sure. With that, the sun is now setting. The night is coming on. The night watch is coming out. Um, uh, if you like, you can take, a, you take your rest and uh, let the voyage continue. Yes, that's I, fine. But... I, I pick my flute and start to, to play a, a peaceful uh, tune. 
Very nice. I guess if uh, if you're playing a flute and I realize that, I'll probably join you with my pan flute. Hmm. I play stronger than you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can probably. You know, your lungs, your other lungs are better than mine, Shani. No, but I, I do. <laughs> Molly tries to get as far as possible from the stew. <laughs> So once I have asserted my uh, strong uh, flute uh, capacity, uh, I feel relaxed and, uh, and uh, tuned down a bit. All right. Uh, after a nice evening of, of music and talking with each other and enjoying the grog, uh, you all settle down for the night to your hammocks. Um, wake up in the morning. It's another nice day. Um, two days pass more at sea, similar to this. Um, Captain Glover and um, Fervus have their their chess match. Um, mm -hmm. let's, we'll, let's see what happens, actually. One second. We probably play in some money. I'm a gambling man. Yeah, OK. If the captain doesn't mind. Oh, Captain Will Campbell, how, what do you want to gamble for? How much? Yeah. Five. Just five gold. Okay. Just to make it spicy. Um, would it be an intelligence check? Yep. Sounds Same good. Time. Let's try that. Sounds good to me. Straight up intelligence. Oh, <laughs> Wait, is it just a plus two? Okay, I'll just roll it. Bum, bum, bum. My saving throw is intelligence. Oh, you win! It was a fairly close game. It was. You almost beat me, Sonny. A couple of more years. Well, I will appreciate more lessons from you, which that's uh, gold well earned. Yeah, so I mean, had a challenge. We still have like, what, five days left or something? We do, although duty calls for now, perhaps a bit later. Yep. Thanks for the game. I'll be in the back of the ship. <laughs> all right. After two more days, um, you are all on deck, and um, Captain Glover is at the wheel. And in the distance, in the west, you see storm clouds starting to gather on the horizon. Mm. I tried to check whether it's, uh, it's going to be rough and if we need to prepare okay. ourselves. Uh, that would be nature? Yeah, sure, you can do nature. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you see the clouds are quite dark and they are gathering, they're covering the horizon from pretty much north to south. You can feel a breeze starting to get stronger. You notice white caps starting to form on the seas. You can feel the ship underneath you starting to rock more. Mm. Um, as time goes on, only a few in a few minutes, the clouds become loom closer and closer and the, the winds pick up more and more. Captain Glover starts to call orders and the men start moving across the decks. Several of them climb, climb the rigging and start reefing the, uh, the upper uh, mainsails. Um, Captain Glover calls to you all and says, stay away from the rails, stay alert. This could get rough. Minutes later, the clouds darken even deeper and now are fully engulfing and covering the sky above the ship. The ship is now rocking back and forth as it rides the, uh, the swells, its bow rising up high and crashing down through breakers as it proceeds forward. Captain Glover calls to you and says, we can use more lookouts to the bow and to the stern. I will go to the bow, Captain. Sounds fun. Okay. I will also go to the bow. What is the bow? The front, the front of the ship. 
<laughs> no, no, no. He's asking what he's about. <laughs> the front way. <laughs> Uh, so okay, so was, this way. Molly and Elvin go to the bow. Eleanor, I guess. I guess. Okay, I guess I will. Let's go to the bow. Everyone's going to the bow. Sure. We need at least one man on the stern. And the stern is the back. The stern's in the back. All right, I'll take the back then. Fine. All right. So three lookouts in the front, one lookout in the back. Um, everyone roll perception. Uh, perception, perception. Where is perception? Wow. Perception. Uh, perception. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so as you're crashing forward and the storm clouds are getting thicker, and the clouds seem like they're dropping from the heavens almost to the top of the masts. Um, Molly, you see what appears to be a shadow in the water beneath the waves paralleling the ship. And the shadow looks gigantic, almost as large as the ship itself. And the ears. I... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I once I notice it, I immediately yell with as much strength as I have. Sea monster. <laughs> and and Captain Glover says, "Sea monster. There should be no sea monsters here." And I point at the shadows. Okay, you point at the shadow, and the shadow is now gone. Really? Oh, I see. The ship continues to crash forward. Everyone give me another roll. Perception? Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah. Furus. Hey. On the stern, you notice what had appeared to be a wave behind the boat um, approaching like like all the other swells have been have been approaching and, and the, the ship has been riding, you realize that it is actually a form of a wake. It's a dual wave split in the front, like something that's pushing the water forward. And as you look, you also see a dark shape underneath. Oh. But the shape that you see is getting closer and closer and closer to the boat. Mm -hmm. And Based on the size of the shadow, it could be at least twice as large as the ship herself. Oh, God. As an old man, I, I don't think I have the power to shout as, as loud as the others, but I will try and say, they came from behind! Captain Glover, you're actually you're actually close to the wheel because the the wheel is also on the oh, stern. Good so Captain Glover turns and looks and says, "All right, it is as you say. We're going to have to do something about this. My men are busy with the rigging. I leave it to you all. Defend the ship. Uh, what? This is going to be bad. <laughs> I've heard of these. I don't know if we're going to survive this. If we go down." We go down, but do what you can. Uh -huh. Action, you pee, let's go, let's do this. So I, I pull my bow, my long bow, long, long bow, and try to grab uh, on the rambard, uh, so not to lose balance. So you go, you go to the stern? Yeah. So you go running back to the, to the other spot? Yes, I'm going where the action is. Okay. They need me. And do Molly and Eleanor follow, or they stay, you stay on the bow? I try to find something to hold. <laughs> and since there is no imminent action yet, I just stay there. Okay. Mm, while they're not there, and I guess nobody's looking, I would like to turn into something. Okay. Uh, this yeah. is the first time you've done this, but you've been having inklings that you, you have... You've yeah. seen visions, having inklings, you could do that. 
Mm hmm mm hmm Sure. So, as you guys arrive, there's a brown bear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With uh, kind of the same epic beard like the old guy. And uh, uh-huh. it, it's up to you guys if you want. <laughs> So I am at the bear because uh, obviously it's a, it's a beast. Yep. About to attack. <laughs> Suddenly a giant brown bear is on the mm. of the ship. <laughs> Captain, Captain Glover's eyes go wide. <laughs> Not an ally? And says, okay, enough of this. And you see um, those of you who are on the stern, Captain Glover, open up a cabinet underneath the wheel and within this cabinet, you see a glowing orb. It's about the size of, um, I don't know, a, a human head, perhaps, so maybe a little bit smaller. Um, it is um, a deep green in color with swirling golds and blues and a little bit of oranges mixed in, uh, and it's glowing faintly. Uh, Captain Glover reaches in, puts his hand on top of it, and another hand on the wheel closes his eyes and the globe starts to glow more and more and more bright and uh, a, a, the light covers the wheelhouse, the wheel area and spreads through the entire ship and as it does so you feel the seas start to calm. Mm. You see the giant wake behind start to fade and drop down into the waters and within moments the sea is again calm and the skies are again clear. Captain Glover turns to you and says, where the hell did this bear come from? And mm. welcome to Graladar. You are now uh, had your first initiation to, to the passing. Congratulations. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm still aiming with my bow, so I'm a bit confused here. The bear Captain, is pointing at the water. Is this bear threatening you? I, I don't know what the deal is with the bear. I thought he was with you. Hmm. Mm. I'm confused. As am I. <laughs> this did not go exactly as I planned. Uh, let me just say that as far as the sea monsters are concerned, yes, indeed, they, they, they do exist. Um, mm. But we have ways to navigate around them, mm. um, thanks to the Council of Graladar. But uh, I guess my little joke <laughs> may have uh, gone a bit too far. Uh, it was a joke. Uh, uh, uh. I tried to speak with a bear. The bear tries to laugh. <laughs> Who are you? I- I'm using my spell. Who are you? Oh, hey. Speak with animals, yeah. Yep. Your name was... Um, mm, Talk Ilanor, to me, beast. Right? No, you don't know, no. Elven. Oh, hi, Elven. Oh, yeah. How's it going? Uh, you know me? <laughs> yep. Where is Fervus? Um, here. Where here? In my belly. No, I don't say that. Uh, I just turn back, and I'm back into old man form. Ah. Yeah. Um, ah. I don't know what happened. I just looked at the monster, and I was like, "Hmm, it's time to turn into a bear," and it worked. Mm. Mm. So I'm a bit confused, but uh, I pretend I understood what was going on. Oh, okay. All right. Don't do this again. Oh, well, certainly not on my ship, I hope. <laughs> so bears are out. How about the wolf? Well, dogs have been on ships before. That that wolf would certainly be more appropriate for a ship than a bear, I would think. Oh, okay. Um, All right. I'll turn actually, into a cat instead. Actually, Eleanor is quite interested in you turning into a bear because, as a researcher, anything that looks unfamiliar to me is quite interesting. Uh, she she has a book called Legendary Beasts and where you find fa- where to find them. She opens the book and she tries to find something that looks closer to the bear that she just saw, but it mm. appears that it's not in the book. So. She actually goes directly and asks you, like, uh, what kind of beer did you transform into? I'm actually oh. quite interested in that. Beer well, I'm, I'm glad you're 
you're interested. Uh, um, I think if my memory doesn't, you know, if 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 my memory serves me, I think that was a brown bear, wasn't it? Was I, was I brown? Brown? If yeah, but I think I can do some other stuff and. Uh, just for funs, I use up my last wild chip to, to to turn into a cat, and just meow mm. at you. That looks fun. Yeah, but I the cat also has that. the beard. Um, okay, so you can't get rid of the beard, I guess, when you transform. But that still looks quite fun. I wish I could do that. Yeah. Is there any way any items that can allow me to transform like that? I'm, I'm not a magical person, I don't mm. usually use magic, but... The cat That's looks true. like it's thinking. But then just does a cat shrug. Meow. <laughs> yeah, disappointing, I know. It's very bothering you, kitty kitty. But you are so cute. Uh, I guess I jump on you, on your, on your shoulder. <laughs> oh, here, here, and I just, I, I pet, I pet the cat instead, right. I'm like... Uh, this cat is very. I, I I really recommend you stay a cat through the whole journey. This is actually better than you know, the old man. Um, the cat hisses a bit, but lets you go with that. Like I'm, I'm complete. I'm like uh, it's a compliment, but it's the same. The same. Like I can be rude sometimes. Sorry about that, but I really like this form compared to your original form. That's just me. Everyone probably understands the cat saying, yep, fair. <laughs> and mm. Owen, you just, you hadn't really thought of it before, but suddenly you realize you were just talking with these animals and you actually know how to talk to animals. And what the hell? Where did that come from? Are you talking to me? Elena? Oh, Elvin. Elvin can actually Elvin? understand what. Uh, uh, Elvin, uh, Elvin just uh, actually took an action to <clears throat> uh, cast a spell and to speak with animals. But Elvin didn't realize he, he could cast a spell. He certainly didn't know anything about being able to speak with animals. So he's quite surprised when he mm. comes to realize what he was oh. actually able to do. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's, uh, you know, I've been in uh, the forest with my uncle and, uh, and um, I got used to animals, I suppose. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> yes, it's me. So, uh, you just noticed Captain Robert is sort of smiling and the crew all, all smiling, but good naturedly. They don't, they're, they're sort of, they were all sort of in on the joke and quite amused by the reaction and by the bear that appeared on the stern. Um, but everyone gets back to work and continues with the voyage. The, the day ends, and after several more days at sea now, uh, Captain Glover says that it should be soon. You're getting close. Sir. Hold on a second. My cat's tearing up my bed. One second. Cat. <laughs> there we go. I, I tried to talk to the cat. Oh. Yes. Stay a while and listen. You want to pay chess? Ooh, me? Yeah. Uh... Do you throw the, the ball somewhere or? Uh, oh yeah, I I guess I do have to uh, throw the balls. No, no, he's okay. Let me show you. Uh, I guess I have to okay. turn back for that. I turn back okay. into old man. And, do uh, I have to guess the colors? And the what? To guess the colors uh, you are holding or you you in a small pound? How does it work? Yeah, it's um yeah exactly like there are two colors. And uh, uh -huh. I bring out my board and send it. Oh, try to set it up. And well, mm. yeah, you know, if you're looks... interested, I can teach you. Uh, uh, mm. It looks complicated. Maybe another time. Uh -oh. We have a couple of more days. If you're interested, mm. I'll be in the back. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I think you have potential. Like, you could talk to me when I was the bear. 
That's amazing. Mm. No, nobody talks to me when I'm a bear, at least. Uh, mm. well, yeah, thank you. It was natural, I think. Oh. You are a natural. Hmm. Anywho, let's have dinner. Oh, good idea. Let's have dinner. You small people want to have dinner too? Yeah, sure. I'm up for a meal now. I'm quite hungry. Okay. Excellent. So you've had uh, several days of, of camaraderie, getting to know each other, and discovering a lot of things that you didn't know about yourselves, perhaps as well. Um, you survived the encounter with the sea monsters or whatever they were. They were certainly quite large. And now, after four more days at sea, um, it is early afternoon, maybe 1 or 2 p.m., and the forward watch yells out, land, land ahead. And oh. everyone rushes to the front. Land ho. Land ho. And sure enough, you see in front of you the uh, the uh, definite outline of land. Um, it looks quite mountainous in the distance. Um, and as you grow closer and closer, as the day goes on, uh, you see the water turning a lighter and lighter shade of green as it gets shallower and the land gets closer. Um, the the profile of the land is large mountains coming down almost right to the sea um, with uh, a number of what really forested mountains for the most part in the forest comes down to the edge of the water. You can't quite see it in detail, it's still ways off. Um, but as you as you start to approach, you, you can tell that, that the, uh, the, the land looks quite wild. Um, the boat goes on. You round a point. And the captain says, we're close to the harbor now. Maybe an hour more goes past as you make your way further inland um, around into a safety of a large inlet. And then as you round a point, one of the men says, oh no. No, captain, look. And the lookout points and the captain looks and you see his face sink. <clears throat> and for, out of the water, you see a mast rising and a wreck appears, uh, partially submerged um, and shored up against a large rock. Um, as you get closer, uh, and this is the direction towards the, the actual harbor of Port Gawach, um, you can see that the ship actually looks burned, partially burned. Um, the sails have mostly burned away. They're, they're, you can see some, some canvas, but, but it's quite burned and the mast is quite burned. What does everybody do? I, I just watch with surprise since we were expecting probably to find, to not find this, but I say nothing. Uh, I would like to understand, uh, try to understand if it's recent or there's been some time this happened. Okay, give me an issue for investigation. Insight? Here. Not insight. That's more of a about people. So it would either be you could either I'd give you either nature or investigation. Um. Hmm. Uh, where is investigation? Oh my god. Okay. Anyway. Hello. I, uh, I rolled, but uh, nothing is happening. Hold on. Okay. Let's try nature. Uh, that should be the first one. Okay. Mm. 
Mm. So yeah, you can't quite tell yourself. Um, if you want, mm. you could choose one of your companions to maybe get their opinion. What do you guys think? Look at this. Is it recent? So just one. Okay. I would like to investigate uh, the cause of the wreckage. Like, was it because of I mean, a sea monster or it was just crashed into some rocks or something? Okay. So check so, either uh, investigation. investigation. Oh, okay. Very good. Oh. So, Elinor, you get the sense that um, the ship, first of all, it's a, it's a square rigger ship, um, similar in construction to the ship that you're on now. Um, the main thing you see is, well, it's, it's sunk, but it's not entirely sunk it, it, because the water is not terribly deep. Um, but it is up against a rock, so it's possible that it was um, some that that had something to do with it. But it, you also see that there are clear signs of fire. Fire coming from inside, or like the outside is more burning. Yeah. Difficult to tell from the distance from from where you are, um, but the decks are blackened, and the mast is blackened, and the sails have mostly burned away. And you notice the sails are furled. Um, they're, they're, you know, the ones that are still remaining, they're, you know, rolled up onto their respective booms um, as if the ship um, was not under sail when this happened. Mm. Is there any name that I see on the sails or like the stuff that's not burned yet completely? Do I see the name of the ship or? Um, you, Know from your your little bit of time on this ship that the uh, name of ships are often uh, written across the stern. Um, the way the ship is facing right now, um, its its uh, bow is mostly pointing towards you. So you'd have to either uh, the the Doncaster either have to come around and to the stern, or you'd have to take one of the small boats off the Doncaster to investigate more closely. Okay, we'll probably do that uh, later. I have a question. Can we see the port already from here? Um, you can see where the harbor, the actual port is, um, uh, and it's not that far. It would take you uh, maybe 10 more minutes sailing to get there. So you are quite close to where the port is. I would like to know if I see anything weird from the city itself. Mm -hmm. um, you see, you can you can make out where the town is, um, and you see some smoke rising from the town. But it looks like it's it's probably um, typical. It's fire. Like you don't see any large plumes of black smoke that would indicate there's a, a fire in the town. Um, other than that, there's not much else you can make out from here. I see. So we need to get closer, apparently. What does everybody think? Should we just wait until that big ship gets to the shore or to the port, or do we go ahead with a smaller boat and investigate the ship? What does everybody think? Uh, I think it would be dangerous to dock right now. We should probably take a little ship and scout ahead. You know, mm. Tell the captain to anchor here and then... You know, Okay, and uh, what does everybody else think? This ship looks slightly scary. Let's go. So, do we mostly agree that we should go and investigate this ship right now, then? Yeah. The smaller boat first? Yeah, let's grab a lifeboat and row over there, I'd say. Okay, so you're going to talk okay. to Captain Glover? Huh? Yeah, sure. Um, so you go over to Captain Glover, and Captain Glover says, I, I, you know, we don't know, obviously, what the name of the ship is yet. Um, we, we can find out, uh, by, hopefully, by, by, by checking the stern. Uh, but I 
I, I can tell you, I recognize that this is uh, a merchant ship um, from, from, from my guild. Um, so oh. this, this may be um, one of the three missing ships um, that I believe you've all seen the reports of the ships that have come out. Um, we don't know, I mean, it's, there's no way to tell from here which of the ships this might be, or perhaps I'm wrong, and it's completely a different ship. Huh. What do you think happened? Well, I think I have pretty much done my task of getting you here. I can take you the rest of the way into Port Galwatch if you want. Uh, if you prefer to investigate this as, as part of your responsibilities to Francis Ofric, then uh, I'm happy to to uh, assist with that uh, as long as it keeps my my ship and my crew safe. Hmm. So let me know what you have in mind and we'll see what we can accommodate. Oh, well, that's exactly the idea. We don't want you to get into trouble by docking here. Who knows? Who knows what happened to these ships? Um, I'm trying to find the ship's name that uh, Ofric, the Urtica, wasn't it? Yeah, Urtica yeah. is the one that Captain Ofric was on. Yeah, we have to find out if that's the Urtica or not. That would probably be a good idea, Captain Weber says. If it, if it is uh, the Urtica and Ofric was on board when it went down, if, if all hands were lost, then, well, <laughs> you may have a very short mission here. Uh. I guess um, Dane turns to the other little halfling and says, What say you? I haven't heard your voice at all during this trip. Can you talk? I, I don't know. I think you might be right. That's all. Hmm. Okay. Uh... Let me quickly jump on this ship. I want to see, actually. You want to jump on it? Yes. All right. So Captain Glover says, I can give you the use of one of the launches. Um, it has a small sail and it has rows, uh, oars. From, from here, I could set anchor and you could take it out. I'd suggest the oars are probably the easiest at this distance since the seas are quite flat. This is a fairly protected harbor where we are now. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. Molly nods and before boarding the lance, she watches the captain and just with a very small voice says, thank you for the easy trip, captain. My pleasure. And once we finish the investigation here, we'll, we'll get into Port Gawatch and happy to, uh, to buy you a drink. Molly adds nothing more and just jumps on the ship. So the men lower the, uh, the launch um, using block and tackle down the side of the Doncast. And there's a rope ladder that you can climb down uh, into the launch. And the launch will is designed to hold about ten people, so you can fit without any trouble, no, unless you're a bear. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so let me do this. One second. Uh, down there. All right, bear with me. Okay, tell me when you can all see 
Shit. Yeah, I do see it. Hello, Lynn. <laughs> Some of these texture maps are um, a bit dense and it may take a little time to load, so sorry about that. That's all right. Okay, so you're coming in um, from the top left. Hold on a second, do this. Top left of the map, so we'll come over here. And you all should be able to control that, so just uh, let me know what you do. Guys, I have a question. How do you toggle between the map and the character sheet? Uh, the character sheet, the open map from and the journal. Character sheet. I mean, you can just um, just exit out of the character sheet, to be fair. Do you want to have both of them up? Yeah. You can pop it the out. Sheet and, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. Pop, pop got it. Out. Got it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Works. Okay, cool. That's what I do, actually. Yeah, thank you. So this is a good token. So one of you can decide, I guess, uh, who has the tiller and can steer the token. For you. Uh, true that. Let's use the party token since there's just oh, one. Okay. Cool. Can you see it there? Is it? Oh, maybe it's not. Sorry. I um, see a token. It's there. It's there. Yeah, it's there. I see it, but uh, I can't. I can't move it. Or... Ah, no, I can't move. No, ah. I can't move it yet. I can move. It. Can't. Ah, I, I think can. everybody can. Yeah. Yeah, everybody can. So we have a front and back side, like two places. To yeah, so you're, it, I guess you're at the uh, bow there. There's actually no sail. It's up and up, or maybe. It's, um, not a perfect map, but uh, so you're you're up near the bow and the the you know the stern's down there in the south. The <coughs> and Leonor wants to investigate the, this area as a bow. Um, okay, so you're you're in a boat, so you can you can go sort of down this way into here, um, and then if you want to beach the boat here, you could tie it off, uh -huh. perhaps you know against some of the some of the cleats on the deck there, um, if that's what you want to do. Huh, and that's a big rock. Now I just loaded him. I realized it was a big rock. Yeah. Interesting. It's shallow water over here, and there oh. aren't really big waves or something. So yeah, something. right. Yeah. Could I? I don't know. Kind of investigate the rock. Is it natural or? Um, I don't know. I think about the spell. Maybe someone because it's just weird that there's a rock there. Mm. Okay. Um, and is this where is this where you are currently? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Let's say that uh, we are basically putting the boat around here yeah. next to the rock, and we can also access that. Yeah, I just want to touch the rock if no okay. one minds. You go up the rock. So, what kind of a, how are you investigating the rock? Uh, well, I put one of my hands on it, close my eyes, and just trying to discern if I feel anything magical in there. Because okay. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, give me an arcane roll. Yeah, I don't have a spell for that, unfortunately. So it's gonna be a arcana. Seeing what you feel. Which I am not good at. <laughs> no. Ah, okay. Rolled high. Nice. Okay. So wow. you close your eyes. Your hand rests wow. on the surface of the rock. Your hand is vibrating slightly as you touch the rock, and you search deep within you. And you feel that this is most likely a rock. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. Looked like a rock to me. But... Yeah, Dane shouts out, it's a rock. <laughs> it's natural. Yeah, can we tell them this is the rock that they like uh, crashed at before, you know, it was broken like the ship? Yeah. So, so um, sure. So the, the, the best rule for this would be, you know, some sort of actual skill in sailing. If any of you, for example, had a sailor background, I don't think any of you do. Um, uh -huh. But you can use other skills to try and substitute for that. It'll just be a little more difficult because, you know, you don't 
have a lot of experience other than your your three weeks at sea about you know ships and drifting and this kind of stuff. Um, but that being said, um, I would take again either a nature or investigation check. Okay, investigation. Here I rolled it. Yeah, you rolled quite well. Oh, nice. Um, so by the looks of it, if you look, you're looking straight down at the, at the edge of the ship and the rock, you can see that the rock is actually penetrating. It appears below the waterline into the side of the ship. And the ship is sort of broken up around the edges of the rock. So it looks like somehow the ship has come in against the rock and has been damaged against the rock. Um, you don't really have the sailing knowledge to know if that was the cause of the, the sinking of the ship. It's sort of like, you know, if you're investigating a dead body and you see they have a gaping wound in their side, you, you know, and it probably didn't help them, but you're not, you don't know for sure if that's what caused the death. If the, if the dead body also happens to be burned. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be the burning, it could be the rock, it could be something else. Um, but it does look like the ship um, has come up onto this rock. Um, you also do notice that, and you can sort of get a sense of it. You don't really get a sense from from this map very well, but hold on a second. I can show you this again. Uh, this one. Are you able to see that? Mm -hmm. So this gives you sort of a better sense of it. There, there are other rocks around, and yeah. you're not too far off from the shore, and there is quite a bit of, um, it looks like there is, is uh, quite a bit of current coming through here as well. You can see the water sort of streaking across, laterally across the ship, past the rock and back again. Uh, we still can determine the uh, cause of the incidents, but we do have a probable cause, I guess might or might not be the whole reason this thing tank over there. So we can just try to investigate this place, I guess. Mm -hmm. Jump into the wreck. Okay. Let me try to explain this map a little bit because it's a little hard to see so you understand what's going on here. Um, so what you're above right now is, is a submerged main deck. Um, that square structure you see just immediately above you um, is elevated and you can see there are stairs on the left and the right that lead up oh. that is the stern um where there is a mast and also where the wheel is located the wheel of the ship will be located and you know this based on oh wait i'm sorry this is the bow oh, i'm wrong this, this wheels on the back sorry this is um this is the uh the forecastle um it is a raised area uh, there is a mast up here um the sort of spoky like thing you see there um, just at the edge of the, the forecastle is um, the actual, the, uh, the anchor winch. Um, and that controls the, uh, the raising and lower the, of the anchors. Um, you can also see that there are two doors um, immediately on the inside of each one of those stairways leading into the, to the cabin, to the interior of the forecastle. And then let's go. Let's go. And see. Right. right, right or left? You read the way, Shanu. Right. Okay. Let's go right then. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I guess you can all put your tokens on the map. Do I have a token? We'll put the ship down here to give you a little more space, the boat. Oh, mine, it's quite big. Oh. Wow, you've grown. <laughs> Where is mine? Can I make it smaller, Andrea? Yeah, how to make it? Oh, that's mine. Okay. Woohoo! Two, two, two. Right. So, how to fix my. I, I, I don't know how to do it, Mike. I think you just drag it smaller. Oh. Yeah. A bit annoying that it's not. I think I'll I will send your... you a new one eventually. Yeah, I think we can check your character sheet. Maybe it may be set to um, the wrong token size. Uh, is it party token Ocon? I, I don't have a token. 
Oh, you don't have to? Yeah, I can blur this down. Hold on one second. Those are too big. Ah, uh, look at you. Oh, this is me. Oh, I'm handsome. Yeah. We'll get this technical thing sorted out at some point. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I'm not that great with um, the ship part, so this is the foremast, correct? And kind of this area is the forecastle, right? Uh, well, it, the terminology doesn't matter too much, but the, the boxy area here. I don't oh, the boxy area is the forecastle, okay. Is it, yeah, that's, so that's the elevated area, and inside of it there's you know a, a space yeah, where yeah. typically they would store sails and things. Okay. Um, and then that's a, in front of that is another deck area, uh -huh. sort of the bow deck area. Gotcha. Yeah, and then the anchor anchors on either side. Now the anchors aren't as they show there. Actually, you don't see the anchors all raised like that. Uh, we are going from the right door over here. Are you going up the stairs or into? Are you opening the door? The door is just to the left of the stairs there, and there's another door further to the left of the stairs, the wooden right. doors. Oh, I said it was up the stairs. Okay, so it's there, there is there's an up, and there's there's a door the same level of the deck that you're on. The closest to 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 us. The door, okay. The the door there's a door. It's sort of that light spot directly um, in front of the building. Okay. Okay. So I go and open the door. Open the door. Okay, and this is where you are. Okay. Hold on one second. I need to move you guys again. this works. I think we're gonna have to drop here. Oh. What happened? Where is everyone? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Winter. Everybody disappeared. Oh. I think you guys are sort of like, where were you? Got to rearrange yourselves one more time to how you want to be. Oh, hell yeah. Like that? Okay. Okay. So is this door locked or is it open? Like, I can just go inside immediately. Yep, it just opened up. Oh, it's open. Okay. Mm, so. Mm, I'm not sure. This part is elevated from the water, right? As you said. So basically, can I check if there are footsteps in front of that door? Like if there is, uh, if somebody has been here before us? You could have, but the door has now been opened. Okay. <laughs> what do we see inside the, the cabin? That's what I'm trying to get my technical savvy a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> One thing. Uh, uh, you do. Okay. Oh, I see. That's one thing. Yeah, that's one thing. Okay, here we go. Okay. And let's see if I can do this. Can you now see the uh, inside? Uh, yes. The loading. Kind of. Oh. Inside the room. Uh, Hello. I, I knew it. A ghastly, just, I don't know how you pronounce this, just sign, fish like figure that resembles some form of a humanoid. Barnacles and coral are encrusted on its cold skin. 
It's a warped body. It's a horrific combination of marine features crossed with humanoid. It has tentacle-like arms, fish-like eyes, sea urchin-like spines and fins, and seaweed in its hair. It turns and sees you as you open the door, and it advances. Roll initiative. Oh, skeleton. <laughs> Do we recognize this as a skeleton, as a dead body, as a living dead? As a... Uh, hold on a second, see if I can give you a picture. One second. Oh. Okay. Oh, he's not happy. Uh, yeah. you know. Richard? Yes. There is an option for you to open an initiative tracker. Yes. Roll 20. All right. Yeah, let me do that. Uh, now, if, whenever you roll initiative, guys, most of you know, I think, but whenever you roll initiative, if you select your token and then roll initiative, it will be automatically tracked there. It could, ah. be, it could be really helpful for Richard. Yeah, should I roll okay. again, I guess? Let me roll again. Where is my initiative? Okay, oh. initiative. See? Very nice. Okay, 14 point. Well, 26. Yeah. I really didn't want to go first, but I guess. I don't even know what's coming. You're the only one who sees that. Okay. I am second. I should be fourth, right? I'm only 13. Oh, that's weird. In the third order, I should be the fourth one, not the second one. Yeah, there is a way to arrange it. The problem is we have. Yeah, there is it. Uh, but it's okay. Ah, you guys all have pretty high decks. Wow. Okay, so it's Purvis's turn. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that thing's coming or not, right? Unless Alvin said something. Yeah, you just have the reaction of your compatriots. You can you can say a few words. Um, Kupid yeah. or was Alvin? Alvin, you can say a few words to describe what you see. Oh, uh, it's it's ugly. It's stinky. It's uh, it's evil. It's one of those beasts uh, that infest uh, probably uh, those uh, wrecked uh, ships. I wouldn't trust uh, my life with it. Let's kill it. Okay. As you said it. Um, so first is uh, going to concentrate on something that's not as big as a bear, but like something vulpin, maybe a wolf. And as a bonus action, I would like to turn into a wolf. And I guess I rush in and see what, what that thing is. Um, and now is the time for me to look at wolf stats. Sorry, wolf 5e. Okay. Got this. I figure this first session or two, we're going to all be getting used to you know, yeah. characters and everything else. So yeah. we'll get the kinks. Okay, out. 40 speed. Wow. Okay, so pop, pop. What's your HP and AC? Oh, with that, yeah, that's a good question because now I've changed forms. Uh, 
would you mind if I rolled the HP for the wolf? I'd rather just for simplicity's sake, I'll just take the, the, do the 11. Okay, yeah, so yeah. then it's an 11. I'll do 11. that. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll update that. I just need to move a bit further. Boom, so this should be 11, 11, and AC is 13 plus, actually 16 with the wisdom stuff. Yeah, 16. So, yeah, and then uh, yeah, you see this, this wolf just rushing past you. And gives that a woo, and um, I guess I'll jump on the guy. Uh, at least I try to. Um, yeah, bite attack. Sure, let's do it. Uh, oh, 20 plus 4. Does a 15 go through? 15, 15 hits. Oh, okay. Um, while I'll roll the damage, could you make me a strength saving throw, DC 11? Yep. Uh, what's that, 2 the 7. Oh, 7, eh? Alright, so, first of all, the dude, I, yeah, the wolf bites into this dude's, I don't know, right arm. Jumping on him and uh, actually prone him because he failed the uh, saving throw. So now this guy is on the ground and I'm chewing on his right arm. Ah, yes. And Go that, for it, doggy. <laughs> yeah, that's my turn. As you do that, his arm comes off in your jowls and Icker spews. Oh. Starts thrashing wildly like a fish out of water. Okay. And what does it taste like? Eyes turn, turn, turn milky, and it lets out a final shuddering breath. Oh, as you've torn it apart. Oh, okay. I guess I look back at the guys with uh, the arm in my hand, uh, in my in my mouth, <laughs> panting. <laughs> yeah, panting, bringing it back. <laughs> what I got? <laughs> I'm putting it on the ground. Mm. What? I, I haven't what understood why there is a wolf, but I look for a beard. Uh, yeah, he has a beard. Ah. Oh. oh. Okay. And the other door smashes open, and out pouring out of it come three other creatures surprising you from behind. Uh, let's roll initiative again. Okay. okay. So select your token, guys, and then... Yeah. I wonder uh, if you have to clean next. or clear the initiative But next order. is uh, Andrea, uh, it's Molly. Oh, we, we, we all need to roll. Uh, again? Okay. Yeah, we roll again. Uh, oh, this time with the wolf stacks. Twenty, yeah, piece of cake. <laughs> it was a nineteen, but you can't see it. Oh, uh, now I need to roll again, I guess. It's a seven, but with the wolf, so, I have plus one, so it's an eight. See, I rolled a twenty, and now I rolled a one. Yay! Okay. Andre, I need did to you, roll again. It's, uh, if you're not, yeah, yeah. But you haven't rolled. Andre, yeah. did you say something, something messed up? Did I, did I delete your roll? You can put it back yeah. if I deleted it. I had a twenty. I had a nineteen. From 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 this new roll, right? Not from the old roll. Yeah, from the new roll. Okay. From the new roll, yeah. Yeah, I was five, and uh, now I'm nineteen. So. Okay. Which you didn't. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let let me roll again. Uh, where, where am I? Okay, let me roll again. Oh, don't roll again. Just put the 20 for your... Uh, really, I can? Well, I mean, roll, roll the 20 and then prior from the new and edit it. You can see, Richard, if you check the chat, we roll the initiative after the, the mage that... Okay. Yeah, so... Oh, yeah, there it is. 19 yeah. for Andrea, a 5 for Z, a yeah. 20 for Elvan, and then... Uh, seven 
or uh, variables. Yeah. yeah. So you guys need to edit manually the initiative since it changed. Yeah. For you, Gilles, you have to roll again and then edit it. Yeah. Manually. Okay, let me click on my character. Initiative. Uh, okay, 16. So you can manually edit it to 20. And Z, you have, unfortunately, you have to manually edit it to five. I still don't understand, but I think I can just input it because, okay, let me try this. Five. I see. Then I need it zero five maybe. Does this work? Yeah. Zero five? Yeah, yeah. Okay. This. Yeah, five, just a five. Okay, good. All right, Alvin, it's your turn. Now the uh, so I see, uh, as my bonus action, I want to draw my swords. Oh, you can actually do that as an item interaction. It doesn't cost you bonus action. OK, OK. So I said, uh, uh, let me go through a small lady. And I go by her side and move to the first. Uh, uh, you can actually can you can actually can move in my same space, should you want to. No, no, no. I uh, I'm close, and there is a bit water, so floof, 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 floof. That's actually fairly deep where you are. You can move. Ah, uh, is it? You can okay. move. It's about waist, a little more than waist deep there, so it would be hard to fight. But you could move uh, to the corner um, of Molly's character to down to the left. I see. Uh, so that would be here, right? Or or to the uh, down to the left, if you prefer that. Yeah. But remember, yeah. oh, I'm good. I want to tell you, should you want to, you can move on my square as well. I'm good, Warian. And um, I, I try to attack uh, this uh, first uh, uh, evil, evil looking uh, monster. Okay. Uh, okay, so I need to roll a short sword. I have two of them, right? Yeah. So let's two roll one and two. Oh my god! That's <laughs> it. Yes. You're well, very excited. Uh, that's <laughs> that's a long time. I haven't. Uh, uh, <laughs> your your feet are a little bit unsteady, having been at sea for so long. You feel the uh, the ship beneath you is moving, although it's not. Yeah, yeah, I'm not used to fight at sea. Yeah, let me learn. Let me learn. Both your uh, both your swings go go wide as the creature hisses mm. at you. <laughs> and mm. out of the way. Um, I think I have still a bit movement. Yeah. Uh, I have what uh, one, two, three squares movement. Uh, at least each one is five feet. Your movement is. Uh, 35. So okay. there's difficult terrain if you go into the water. So double, double any water squares. Yeah. So I, I go back uh, behind. Um, okay. But remember, if you do that, you can get, uh, they can get a bonus attack on you. Yeah. That would, that would uh, trigger an attack of opportunity. I'll consider it. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So I stand my ground and try to defend myself. Horrible beast. Is that it? Yes. Molly. So Molly is a bit scared of what's happening. She takes a disengage action yep. and moves here, kind of hiding under the group. OK. So disengaging movement, OK? Yes. Is that up your turn? I'm turning my head and see this little uh, scrawny figure moving in the back. Hey, how dare you? The fight is here. <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay. Okay. Um, now, this is a Similarly horrid looking creature um, that looks 
again transformed from some sort of a humanoid previously now is is been taken by the sea um, it looks at Elvin who's closest to it and yep. lashes out um, I was reading this. Okay. First, it will lash out with a tentacle. Oh. Um, but misses you entirely. Hmm. Um, and then. That's all you got. Show me what you got. This is an attacks by trying to bite your face. Uh, and it rolled an 18. So it rips Ow. a large chunk out of your cheek and you take 10 damage. Oh, ah, it's just a flesh wound. Don't worry, guys. Ah. The last attack, it tries to punch out at you with its clawed, fishy-like appendage. Mm. Oh, and it hits for 11 damage. Wow. Oh, that's painful. Are you still alive there? Yes. That's it for this that attack. Uh, this other creature advances to here and attacks Fervus. Yep. This is the wrong one. Hold on a second. Here. Okay. Um, an attack slashes out with its claw. Huh? This is entirely trips over itself, and that's all it can do. This other one advances and moves to strike again at Elvin, striking out with its claw. Ah. This is not the right cheat. Now this is why game testing is a good idea. I have the wrong stats loaded in. One second, I'm going to roll this by hand. Where does it get it? Oops, two. Uh, just a question, well, DM. Is it intentional that you're whispering the rolls? Uh, yeah, the rolls okay. are meant to be whispered on my side, but okay. they're actually not. They're not even rolling correctly just for, wondering. for some reason. Um, you take one damage. I take one damage? One damage. Uh, it's painful. Why do you keep doing this to me? My revenge will be terrible. <laughs> that's that's it for his turn. What oh. happened to the tracker? The tracker yeah, what happened to the initiative tracker? There that's we right. go. Fervous turn. Oh. Okay. Well, all right. Um, two things. So, attack... This guy, same kind of pounce on him. This time, because there's an ally fighting it, I get advantage. Pack tactics. Check for crit. Okay, 18 to hit. 18 hits? Yeah. Which one are you attacking? You're attacking the one closest to you, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, the, the one that I can, because I don't want right. to swim around and stuff. I don't know how well wolves swim. I guess they do, but 
Anyway. Um, so first things first, damage, eight. And again, you tear its leg off. Is it? Okay, it's gone. Cool. cool. Nice. And okay. I like the spirit of your fight, Fervus. Well, and um looks like I won't have a turn. That's fine. Wait, I mean <laughs> actually mine is not done yet. Uh could I jump on the back of I guess it's floating now kind of. Jump on the back of the, the corpse. Yeah, you can you can move that space, it's fine. Alright, and you're gonna see something that you have never seen a wolf do before. Uh He's going to uh, jump up a little, stand on his um, hind legs, something, and uh, do a roundhouse kick to the jaw <laughs> <laughs> um, of that dude uh, again. Pack I tactics. saw that before. I saw that before. I saw that before. Okay. Well, so you're not that impressed. 21, and it's only going to do a measly... That's a 21 to hit? Yeah, 21 to hit. Any damage? Uh, No. Well, did I roll it? No, no, no. It's uh, 5 damage. Okay. Oh, I see. I'm confused. Yeah, me too. I don't know why I... Oh, no, because I rolled with advantage. That's a d20. Oh, I see. Okay, so you hit it with 5. But yeah, just the damage is 5. And uh, yeah, arrive on 4 feet again. And just float on the corpse. The uh, the roundhouse kick, although to you would seem not so powerful, takes its head clear off. Wow! And it falls down. Okay. And I'm done. Um, great. Illinois. Um. Okay. Um. I would like to know how how big is this thing? Is this creature? It's a medium sized creature. It's um it's about uh but not not very tall for a humanoid. Um, it's probably only about um four and a half feet tall. Uh, how much is that a meter, please? Oh, sorry. It's a uh, what is that like? Uh, meter and. Point three, one point three meter, maybe. Ah, okay, so it's it's bigger than me, I guess. So in that case, I would like to move through it because I'm a halfling. I'd like to move through it and sneak attack it from the back. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay, so go ahead and do your move. So I'm going to sneak attack it from the back. So first, I need to. I will attack with my rapier. Let me roll for that. And uh, I got is that it? I guess it's it. Size larger than okay. are you are you small considered small size or a medium sized creature just out of curiosity? Uh no, it uh it says uh let me let me read for you. I can move through the space of any creature that is of a size larger than me. Yes. So if it's bigger than me, I can move through him. And how tall are you? But you're a medium sized creature, aren't you? Uh, I, I was like one meter. Uh, tall, one meter, around one meter. The halfling is a small creature. Yeah, halfling is a small creature. Uh, halfling is a small creature. Okay. I'm like 40 centimeters uh, smaller than this guy. This thing. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's what works. Okay. Go ahead and do your move um, so we can see where you are on the board and then do your most looking uh, Okay, so I, I move through it so I can be basically yep. behind it. Okay. And and then I attack it, and uh, I got uh, I guess this succeeds. I roll for the attack with my rapier. Yep. So it's 24, then, 24 to hit. Yeah. That and, hits. Yeah, and then I'm gonna roll for the attack, and then I will also roll for sneak attack because I'm attacking. Yep. So it's additional d6. So first, attack. first I'm gonna roll for the. Yeah, you're in. The damage roll for the rapier is there. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Under your roll. Uh, okay, so it's already ah uh, yeah one d eight plus three. Okay, okay. So that's that's six plus. I'm gonna roll for roll for that. sneak attack. Yes. Just a d six. So two two d six. So two six. Right. Six. And that's it. I rolled it. Okay, so, so it's total full damage. So yeah, six plus six. Yeah. Total okay. damage. 
you give her a good gash um, across her back from behind. Um, she clearly feels it, turns around, and hisses at you. And you then I will use my bonus attack to hide. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, do, you'll try to hide there. Uh, I don't think that's, that's my ability. <laughs> <laughs> you can try. I don't think you'll succeed. <laughs> but, but you gave it a good hit. Um, okay, so I, um, can I roll for that? It's a uh, naturally stealthy. Uh, well, so hiding, I, hiding requires you to be out of sight, though. Um, you couldn't actually hide directly in front of a creature that, that is looking right at you. Um, Unless you've got some sort of a special ability that allows you to do that, but I don't think you do. No, wait, I, I have it, but I can't see it for some reason. And what was it? Yeah, it says you can attempt to hide even when you're obscured only by a creature that is one size larger than you. That's yeah, your uh, stealthy. But yeah, you're, that's, you're yes. not obscured there. But there is no friendly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, yes, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll just uh, j jump away from it. And yeah. That's so, it. As, a, as a, I think you have, um, as part of your cunning action, do you have cunning action? Yeah, you have cunning yeah, action. Yeah, I have cunning action, yeah. So you could use your bonus. So I'm going to use it to disengage, yeah. yeah, yeah oh, it yeah. says or hide. That's why, yeah, that was the one I was looking for. Can you action to hide or disengage? Okay. Uh, I was going to use that. Disengage? Yeah, so disengage. Is it. And are you staying where you are or you're moving? With the disengage? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm moving away. So let me disengage yeah, but you away. Have, you have only one square left. Yeah, so I'm just I'm just going to move a little bit farther. As like you this. move. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's a cut in action, so I'm going to move that. Okay, I'm done. Great. Uh, so it's a new round. Elvin, it's your turn. How are you doing? Oh, this uh, creature gets me very upset. I'm concentrating a bit on out of my concentration comes Zephyr Strike. And I move fast and swift as the wind. Um, so that will be uh, one attack with uh, advantage. Okay. Uh, let me see. One attack with advantage with my sword. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Sword, sword, sword. Where is my sword? Uh, okay. Sword. And uh, I'm throwing uh, my short sword. So with advantage. That's a, actually that's a crit. Yeah. Right. No, it's not a crit. What's that? It's not a crit. Why not? Not a natural twenty. Oh, it's a dirty. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. So that's a twenty. But you have rolled an advantage, right? You roll. You can roll a second time to see if you get um, crit. You can just roll just to see. Oh, uh, he already rolled. No, two actually. Times. Did he? Yeah. Oh, it's a two. Yeah. Here. yeah the red one is uh, uh, one. Yeah, the red one is second. But I have another weapon. Uh, my uh, second sword, so I pierce this uh, evil creatures, and then I try to attack it again with my second sword. Okay, but real quick, before you do that, um, yes. because you have the Colossus Slayer trait, um, you get, and this creature has been hit, then you get an additional ah, yes. on your damage, so you can roll an additional d8. Yes, that's correct. So, but anyway, I roll my two sword, uh, so that's a 15 damage plus another d8, which is hold on, uh, I need to find it. Probably d8, d8. Ah, there is the turn order that is I did. Okay, d8. Uh, oh, a grand one. How about you did 16? <laughs> yeah, oh, I think you get to add die creatures, more die to the first strike. I think it's well. Anyways, is you it get two D eight though. You get it for each one of your, or is it once per turn? Hold on, what's your character sheet say? Mm. Uh, I do. Okay. On a seven. Okay. No, never mind. Uh, only once per turn. Yeah, you only get the one D eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's just a one. So one. Okay. So total of sixteen. Sixteen. Right? Okay. Great. Yes. Okay, it looks very, very bloodied. Um, you, your sword cut deeply into its flesh. It's oh. holding its arm, um, but it looks very angry. And okay. 
as uh, my movement action, since uh, I can escape like the wind, I moved uh, uh, in the back uh, uh, yeah, somewhere in the water, actually. The wolf stares you... down on you. <laughs> that would trigger an attack of opportunity since you used uh, no, your No, 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 I have a Zephyr Strike, which oh, uh, actually... Right. Yeah. That's right. Yes, that's, that's what good. I have used. I'm uh, I'm swift like the wind. On uh, yeah, yeah. none of my enemy can react to my speed. Yes, very good. So I like how he like surprises his character. Like mm. I'm fast like the wind. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's better than my cunning action. Actually. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, but it takes him a spell to do that. You can do cunning action every, every turn. Um. Oh shit though, but you know what? Uh when did you cast that spell, Zephyr Strike? Uh it's oh. uh in the bonus section. It's uh the, it's it's my bad. We, we'll we'll let it go this time. Um your your second uh sword attack is actually also your bonus action. You're only allowed one bonus action. Oh is it? Yep, but that's all right. Uh, all right. Don't worry, so we'll do that for the next time. Or it's all it's all learning. We're getting we're getting Oh you can remove six uh six hit yeah. uh, that it's, on it'll, it'll all work out. Uh, it is Molly's turn. So, Knowles takes some courage since the team is doing very well and since she saw the helps taking so much wounds and she charges this creature attacking with her weapon. Okay. And I think I rolled, yeah, but I think I missed. I did a nine. Oh, uh, did not hit. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, it is the creature's turn. And the creature looks at Molly, and looks at Eleanor, looks back and forth. And attacks Eleanor. Second. Yeah, I hear you now. It flashes out with uh, its good remaining arm. Wow, you guys are rolling great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hold on a second. This damage can't be right. You're going to roll a creep. Roll a crit save, probably mm -hmm. a lot. So. Yeah, no, one hit. Uh, oh, wait a minute, it, crit. it might have been a crit. Uh, no, it was not a crit. That's not it. Hold on, I'm gonna go for something to show this is right. Otherwise, it's So first attack with its claw, six damage. Uh, who is it attacking again? Uh, to no. No, no armor class check, just six damage straight. No, it rolled. It rolled an eight. It rolled a where's the roll? Eighteen to hit. I think your armor yes. class is sixteen. Okay, fine. I got that. I was going for you. Okay. Did that anything else? Um, it's taking a second attack. This is with its tentacle. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, I just critted 26. <laughs> oh my god, uh, well, I jump in trailing. Is it, is, it, is it really that strong? I mean, they always kill uh, Elven, kind of. Seven plus two. Okay, you take nine damage. Another nine damage. Nine damage, another nine damage, and you're grappled. Okay, so that's total of 15 damage, is this correct? What did I tell you before? It was a six, six wasn't it? Yeah. So, okay. Total 15, so 15 damage. Okay. So, and I'm grappled. 
Okay. And you're wrapped. Okay. And so that's it. So it's holding on to you. Oh my it's gosh. Okay. Wow. My HP is nine now. That's wow. it's true. Purse. All right. Jump on this guy, seeing that um, it's taking one of our little girls. Uh, pack tactics still, because I do have allies around me. 23 to hit. 23 hits. Okay. And uh, this is going to be a bite. I'll try to bite its face. I could try to bite Alvin's face. So that's a six. Um, you take a gash out of its cheek, a big part. Its jaw is now exposed. Okay. It's sort of hanging there. Um, it looks really in bad shape. But it's oh just standing and it's okay. <laughs> Could it give me a strength saving throw again? 11. Yeah. Let me check this thing's strength. Oh, oh, nice. That's fine. Shakes me off. All right. The guy yeah. then, I'll take a few steps back and do a headbutt. <laughs> Try to go for the solar plexus of this little beastie. Uh, 15 to hit? Uh, 15 hits. Okay, and this is just only going to do 1d4 plus 2, free damage. What was your last damage? was 6, right? Oh. Yes. Uh, was it? Yeah, it was six it's, plus three, nine. It's barely alive. It's, ah. it's, it's sort of. It looks dazed. It doesn't look like it knows where it is. Um, but oh God. I'll move next to. Starting down to a one knee, but it's still, it's still breathing. Okay, that's my turn. Molly. I believe it's your turn, Zia. Yeah. See you. It's my turn. I'm sorry oh, because sorry. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's, uh, yeah, you're it's not showing the turn order, so I was actually. Uh, doesn't okay, it? Fine. Okay, fine. So the you go up in the turn order when it's your turn, like in the green box. But, okay. Um. Well, anyway, so it's still like uh, it's gripping into me, so I need to try to shake it up first. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. You need to try if. Uh, I think actually, if I remember the grapple rules right, you can attack when you're grappled, you just can't move. I believe so, yes. And I don't think there's even any disadvantage to it or anything else. No, it's so fine. I, I will try to hit it while it's uh, grappling to me. I will try to hit it with my Reaper again, Tim. Okay. Since it's stuck in me anyway, so it should be easier for me to hit her. 16, you hit. Okay, and uh, that's four. four damage. Yep, you also get your sneak attack damage because you have an ally within five feet of the enemy. Uh, I thought there, there's only one enemy now, right? right? Yeah, but you have an ally that's, uh, that's, that's engaged with the enemy, that's within five feet of the enemy. So the enemy is distracted, so you get your sneak ah. attack. I don't need advantage here. I don't no. need advantage. Okay. Oh, and then so one 2D, okay, sorry. 2D6. Six. And it's a 4. And your rapier cuts its head straight off. Oh. 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 I finally I got rid of, I got rid of this thingy. It was. Yeah. It feels really bad sitting stuck with the thing. Gross. And that is it. Well done. Can I, somebody I, heal, I, heal I, me, I, please? I immediately go to the elf. Since he's so wounded, I just ask him, are you, are you right? Well, um, it's just a 22 hit point bruise. <laughs> That's that's actually yeah, worse than mine. Mine is uh, how much of it? But the glory is not won by just picking flowers. <laughs> <laughs> you're a brave guy, but you're also reckless. Please 
be more careful next time. You, you almost took all of them out, which is a good thing, but you, you almost took yourself out as well, which is not good for us. But you guys don't have any healing power. What type of people are you? <laughs> and the wolf eyes you down. Yeah. Eleanor can't say anything. I'm a poor halfling. What do you expect from me? Mm. I have okay. no backups with me. Okay, see. Ya. Uh, so I'm going to cast a spell if it's possible. Um, that will be the second one, and it will be good berries. I'm creating some natural food uh, with my hands. Um, <coughs> food is in, in my hands, and I'm grabbing uh, eight of it. Anyone wants? Yeah, sure. I love them. It's one so, time per day, right? Uh, yeah, it will. Uh, it will be good for you for the. But um, I'm eating eight of them because uh, I'm hungry after all this fight, <laughs> and I'm in a bad shape actually. So let's. Uh, so let's see. Fold. Fold. I guess you have to roll a d10 to see how many come out. Uh, no, I think it's a one pair. Um, yeah, it was ah. like uh, in early edition, you like 3.5. I think you had to roll it, but 5e, pff, it just says up to 10. So, 10. I mean, yeah. it's okay. up to the DM, I guess, like whatever. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's fair, it's fair to make 10 because compared to a healing yeah. spell, it's similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I roll a d10. No, 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 no. You get 10 points oh. of healing. You can, you can split that however you want. Okay, you ate so, them all? Wow. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to eat uh, eight of them because uh, I'm in bad shape. And two to every, anyone who wants. So. That's like <laughs> nourishment for a day. <laughs> yes, it wow. is. Wow. You feel full. <laughs> yes, yes. You are giving two away, right? Yes. Okay, I would like to have at least one of them. With them, a that's just a one hit point, so take two. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else wants them? I'm okay. No, it's got hit. Yeah, we're okay. okay, I think. Okay, I'm gonna eat both of them then, just recover two HP. And hmm? back at 11. So, Eleanor, what's your current hit point? 11. 11 okay. Which is not bad. Yeah. And Elvin, what's yours? Uh, it's a 32 minus 14, so that's, uh, what is it, 18? 18 hit points now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And everyone else is not injured, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, it is almost 11 o'clock. Uh, is this a good place to end it? Uh, yes. I guess so. Right? Take, take a break. Uh, Depending what you want to do. Do you want to look inside those rooms real quick just so you get an idea? Yeah, why not? The doors yeah. are open. You can see. Yes. Inside. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. All right. So in the left room, I still don't know why I can't click. Why am I not getting any click? How are you getting the circle to show up? Ah, uh, you have to hold hold the mouse uh, at a specific point. Hold the left. Bottom. Hmm. Still not getting anything. Are you in the? You see the toolbar in the top left corner. Yeah. And um, make sure you are in the with the first option, the select move one. Yeah. yeah. Narrow option, and yeah. then click on any spot and hold the mouse. Hold the mouse. That's what I'm not doing. I'm clicking the mouse. Great. Okay. So. This room over here is empty. Um, and this room over here, you see stair, a stairway leading down to the below decks. This is not so different than the ship that you just spent three weeks on. So you know that that's uh, the hatchway um, down to the, uh, the main, main below decks area. If it's like your ship, there, there'll be um, various cabin areas, there'll be storage areas in the center. Richard. 
I'm curious. I want to check the creators we just slain. Yes. The, um, the first ones. Yes. Not the tentacle one, the zombie like ones. See, are they still having clothes or hold it be they were humans once? That's what I want to check. If they have any belongings that make me think they call that being human. Okay, um, sure. Give me either a nature or an investigation or an arcana check. Sure. So nature or investigation? Uh, up to you. It's the same. Okay. And so it's, well, that's fine. At least you determine, yes, they do have clothes on. That doesn't take much determination. You can see sharp, uh, uh, torn, tattered, and waterlogged fabric um, that looks like human clothing in torn state. So I, mm -hmm. I watch the team and I speak. I'm, I'm not the smartest person here, but I suspect people in this ship got sick and become what we fought. And that's the reason why they burned this ship down. So we could get sick if we stay here. Oh, that's smart. Um, I'll try to, to understand if I can relate uh, what they are affected by to, to some kind of disease. Sure, that'd be a nature check. Uh, wouldn't it be medicine? Oh, do you have medicine? Yeah, if you have medicine. Yes, well. yes. Okay. Probably want to check yourself. You've been bit. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. It's, uh... Would the wolf say if the wolf could talk? So um, where is my role? It's a quite a good role. It's 19. 19, well, 19 it, yes. So tell me again what it is that you're, you're looking for. Um, I, I want to determine if uh, indeed they were afflicted by a, a disease and if I can recognize this disease. Okay. Um, you don't recognize a disease. Um, you've never seen these creatures before, for one thing. Um, it does look like they have been transformed. Um, and when you look at them, um, you can tell that they, they are creatures um, that, that were once humanoid. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the one that you just had the most trouble uh, killing, the features um, don't quite look elven, but look related to elven in a certain, perhaps distant cousin kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but you, just from what you would expect to see from disease, you don't see any direct indication of that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it does certainly appear to you to be some sort of a transformation. Hmm. For the record, in wolf form, I would like to memorize their smell. Okay. So Let's go and see what's inside this ship. Uh, guys, if you don't mind, I kind of gotta go now. Uh, Ye yes, that was a concluding uh, yeah. <laughs> sentence. Yeah. No, like... <laughs> but it's okay. Feel free if you want to continue without me. I don't mind. No, that's fine. No, no, I need to, to go as well. It's, uh, my, my maximum is 11. Yeah, we can wrap it up here and uh, and uh, thank you guys very much for uh, for session one. Well, thank, thank you for the thank, thank, yeah, thank you for playing, guys. You put a lot of Thanks, Richard. Oh, yeah. really, thank you, Richard. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Really I, nice guess, to play. I guess we'll talk on Sunday for uh, for Bell's game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let me let me figure out something. None of us has any healing uh, capability. Or oh, they are not. You are not sharing. Uh, okay, guys, uh, can you you can discuss this? I just need to. Yeah. Know, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. Anyway, uh, see you guys. Okay. Nice. Uh, All right. Well, that's meta play. So yes. I, uh, it's I okay. Don't answer. You, you no have problem. to ask the master. You have to ask them. If you are concerned about the team, mm. what I realize, I think it's a very well balanced team. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm 
I'm personally not that worried about the team for, for 5e if it was Pathfinder or one of the earlier editions, maybe. Um, but, you know, I, I think that with short rests, the ability to take short rests, I think you guys will be okay. Um, okay. You know, you, you will get, you know, it's, this is not a super forgiving uh, game. So you, you, you can get hit pretty hard if you're not careful. Um, but most of the time, there's, you know, there's four of you. You've got a lot of hit points between you. As long as you're able to survive and pull out your wounded, you know, you'll live to fight another day. Very well. Okay, guys. So talk to you on uh, Sunday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the games. Bye-bye.